Good afternoon, Dr Nike. Um, my name is Izzy Westbury. I'm the secretary here at the Oxford Union. Uh, I have a very short question to ask. Um, you talk about the hijab being something that serves to protect a woman. Surely it's, so, it's extremely patronising and degrading to prevent a woman from making that decision for herself. How could you answer that? What's the question, sister? I said, in your speech, you talk about the hijab being something that serves to protect a woman. But how is it not extremely patronising and degrading in not allowing the woman to make that decision herself? Sister, I pose a very good question, that when I say that hijab is required for a woman, isn't it not degrading for the woman to patronise it? Isn't it degrading? If you read the Quran, the Quran and Islam has prescribed hijab. That means the woman should be covered. The only part that can be seen are the face and the hands up to the wrist. This is for the modesty. And it is not only mentioned in the Quran, it is also mentioned in the Bible. If you read the Bible in the first Timothy, chapter number two, verse number nine, it says that women should be dressed up with shamefacedness. They should be dressed up with sobriety and should not wear braided hair or gold or pearls. It's further mentioned in the first Corinthians, chapter number 11, verse number five, six. The woman that does not cover her head, then she dishonors her head. Her head should be shaved off. Anyway, I don't agree with this. I'm just quoting you from the Bible. Same way, if you go to the Vedas, it says that the woman should cover the head. So all the religious scriptures, they talk about the woman covering their head. It is for modesty. It is not to degrade the woman. And if we analyze, there was an allegation made against me saying that Dr. Zakir Naik says that if they don't wear hijab, you know, that if you wear Western clothes, there are chances the woman will be raped. It is a misquotation again. What I said, that if women were revealing clothes, they have more chances of being raped. What I was doing, the same newspaper, Sunday Times, which spoke against me, one year before, on the March of 9th, 2009, Sunday Times carried an article. In Britain, one out of seven feel that the women who were sexy revealing clothes, she should be hit. I'm sorry, I don't agree with it. This is the statistics that was given in the Sunday Times on the 9th of March 2009, that in Britain, one out of seven Britishers believe that the women who were revealing and sexy clothes should be hit. I disagree with this. Furthermore, one more article came in 2005. In the same newspaper, Sunday Times, it said that 26% of the Britishers, they feel that wearing revealing clothes is partially or totally responsible for the rape. So what I say, that the more modest you are dressed up, you are respected more. So Islam has prescribed the modest hijab for the woman not to degrade her but to uplift her. I do agree there may be cultural differences. Islam cannot force anyone to adopt it. There are cultural differences. For example, I'll give you an example. That some societies, what they feel, that even looking at a woman is immodest. Some societies feel looking is no problem. But touching a woman is immodest. Some of the societies feel shaking hand is no problem. Some societies feel kissing no problem. Some societies feel doing anything as long as both agree is no problem. Different societies and different cultures have got different rules and regulations. When I went to America, while I was giving a talk, one of the American told me, you Eastern woman, you are immodest. I was shocked. So I said, why do you call the Eastern woman immodest? He told me, you Eastern women, you expose your belly. So in America and Western country, exposing belly is immodesty. In India, exposing belly is not immodesty, wearing shorts is immodesty. So what I've realized, sister, there's different culture, there's different system. Islam cannot force anyone to adopt. It's clearly mentioned in the Quran in Surah Baqarah, chapter number two, verse number 256. Like Rafiddin, there is no compulsion in religion. But if some women want to adopt the hijab because they feel modest and they feel respected, I feel no other woman should disagree. And when I've been to UK, I've seen hundreds and thousands of women who do cover their hair and who feel that they are uplifted because of this modesty. Hope that answers the question.